Hello everyone, welcome to Lukman IS. Today we are going to have a DTRS session. DTRS stands for Daily Tucker Rapid Series. So in this particular series, we cover 10 MCQs every day from current affairs. And these MCQs are selected from those topics that are very probable for the UPSC prelims exam. And not only we, can, uh, we let's say, cover MCQs, along with this, we also uh, like, you know, refer the previous year questions as well. So we will showcase, uh, we will showcase the previous year questions from similar topics. All right. So let us start the discussion with a quotation. And this quotation is taken just to, uh, let's say, like, you know, motivate you related to your preparation. So here Swami Vivekanand says that in a day, when you don't come across any problem, you can be sure that you are traveling in a wrong path. All right. So here, what Swami Vivekanand mentions is that like if you are traveling in the right direction, if you are traveling in the right path, right? So it is going to be full of difficulties. You will come across different hurdles. You will come across difficulties and your work will be to overcome those difficulties. The more you overcome the difficulties, the more you create, let's say like, you know, your potential, the more you skill yourself, right? To uh, solve similar difficulties in the future in an easy form. So here he refers that like, you know, when a day, if you don't come across any problem, it means like you are not going in the right direction, it means like you are not progressing, right? You are not elevating your standard, you are not elevating your level. Okay, so with this, now let us uh, quickly go and start the discussion related to the MCQs. So today in our MCQ discussion session, we are going to cover, let's say current affairs from these topics. So we are going to understand about the savanna type of climate, which is part of geography and climate. Then we are going to discuss about a government scheme. It is known as Prithvi scheme. We will understand what are, uh, let's say the components of this scheme under which ministry it comes, right? What is the objective of this scheme? We will understand about this. After then we are going to discuss about invariant natural, uh, natural killer T cells. So this is a kind of cells that are found in human beings that are found in species. So we will understand about the properties of these cells, how they are connected with, let's say the immune system in our body. Okay, we are going to discuss about these cells. This is going to be from science and technology point of view. Then we are going to discuss about a government scheme. It is known as Pradhan Mantri Matsya Kisan Samriddhi Saha Yojana. Okay, so you might have heard about Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana. So this particular scheme is a sub scheme, right? This is a sub scheme of that scheme. We are going to discuss the relation with that scheme. We are going to discuss about the component of this scheme. We are going to discuss about who are the eligible beneficiaries of this scheme. Then we are going to discuss about anti ferromagnets. Basically, like you know, we will discuss about the magnetic properties of materials. We will understand about different types of magnetism. We will understand about ferrom ferromagnetism, anti ferromagnetism, and we are also going to discuss about a new type of magnetism that has been recently discovered. Okay, so this this topic is also from the point of science and technology. Okay, then. We are going to discuss about the recent development related to Nalgonda district in Telangana. Okay. Not only that development, we are going to discuss about, let's say like, you know, an art and culture related topic. Then we are going to discuss about high sulfur coal, right? So we know about different types of coals, right? One of the type of coal is where we have high content of sulfur. We will understand in which states in India do, uh, do we find high sulfur coal. So this will be from the point of view of geography, right? Just resource geography, basically. Then we are going to discuss about places and news. Uh, in this particular questions discussion, we will cover the most important places and news that are in news because UPSC has asked questions in the prelims exam related to this section. It will help you to cover the mapping related areas. Then we are going to discuss about a variety of fish right which was in news it is known as tilapia fish okay tilapia fish okay not tipala tilapia fish we are going to discuss then we are going to discuss about black carbon okay so we discuss about environment and ecology we talk about different types of let's say pollutants that are there in in our atmosphere 
so black carbon is also a kind of pollutant we are going to discuss about the nature of this pollutant what is the quantity of black carbon in the atmosphere we will discuss about like which country has taken a step related to reducing black car carbon so we are going to discuss about all of it one by one okay so having discussed the objectives of today's discussion let us take the first question for discussion okay so this question as we discussed it is related to savanna type of climate right so here before we discuss this particular question let me briefly make you understand what do we mean by savanna type of climate what is the importance of savanna type of climate okay so i'll be taking just a minute of you to make you understand about savanna type of climate to understand that factor let us first understand that uh, let's say like you know this is earth okay let's say this is earth so i have drawn map of earth okay so and here in earth we know there is a line in the middle of earth right that is known as zero degree line and this is known as equator okay this is known as equator then like we do have two more important lines okay that like let's say that we are going to refer one of the line passes through 23 and half degree north latitude this is known as tropic of tropic of cancer and the other line passes through 23 and half degree south latitude this is known as tropic of tropic of capricorn okay Tro tropic of capricorn so basically when we talk about savanna type of climate so where do we find this kind of climate the savanna type of climate is found between the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn so this savanna type of climate lies within the tropics within the tropics means like between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn to be more specific generally savanna type of climate lies between 5 degree to 15 degree north right and 5 degree and 15 degree 5 degree and 15 degree to the south of equator so this is the range where we find savanna type of climate so all those countries in the world that falls within the tropics that fall in this particular latitude right so here there is a probability that we find savanna type of climate and to be very specific where savanna type of climate is more pronounced it is pronounced in sudan okay it is pronounced in because we know africa is a continent through which the equator passes tropic of cancer passes tropic of capricorn also passes okay in africa there is a country which is known as sudan right which is known as sudan so in sudan we find savanna type of climate right we find savanna type of climate right and sometimes it is also referred to as sudan type of climate okay it is also referred as sudan type of climate now having understood this now let us understand what happens in savanna type of climate what is the let's say like you know uh, like pre precipitation and temperature ranges so basically as we all know tropics are those lines right under which we have the maximum sunlight so here within the tropics right in the savanna type of climate regions we find more temperature right and we find high rainfall also so over here right one of the quality will be is that like there will be more precipitation right there will be more pre precipitation will be more precipitation means rainfall okay precipitation means rainfall and second thing is here temperature will be high okay temperature will be high so when we talk about savanna type of climate in this particular region we will be having high temperature also we will be having more precipitation as well so the thing is like we find grasslands over here we find trees over here right so there are some regions in india as well where we find savanna type of climate okay so this is the thing so having understood this particular thing let us now quickly go back to the question to understand what the question demands right what the question says so 
it says consider the following statements with respect to savanna type of climate number one this type of climate is found between the equatorial forests and the trade hot uh, trade wind hot deserts okay <clears throat> this type of climate is found between equatorial forest and the trade wind hot desert this statement is right okay then we have another statement it says it is characterized by an alternate hot rainy season and a cool dry season okay this is also a characteristics of the savanna type of climate okay this is also a characteristic of savanna type of climate right i made you understand about savanna type of climate however it does have many characteristics right for that you need to go back to your gc leon book you need to uh, read different types of climates the later half of the book chapter number 13 to 25 i guess right they have discussed different types of climates across the world right copen's uh, climatic classification yeah, you read about it right in geography so that will help you to solve questions like this it is important for you to read the types of climate it is also mentioned it is also covered in ncrt book of geography okay so correct answer will be option c in this case option c both the statements are correct right so here they are asking which of them are correct now we have a previous year question it says the greatest diversity of animal and plant species occur in tropical moist forest okay means in the tropical regions we have greatest diversity of flora and fauna greatest diversity of plants and animals why it is because here we have high temperature we have high precipitation also like you know that gives variability in light forms okay that gives variability in life forms so with this let us now move to another uh, question okay why this question was in news why this topic was in news because recently in Maharashtra they have conducted a uh, let's say climatic study right so that climatic study has revealed that agricultural conversion and afforestation destroys right savanna biodiversity in Maharashtra okay so it has destroyed savanna bi bi biodiversity this is the thing so with this let us now quickly move to another article okay this is another uh, another topic basically so in this topic we are going to discuss about a government scheme it is known as prithvi scheme right so it says which one of the following best describes the objective of the prithvi scheme so here they are directly asking about objective of a government scheme so it is important for you whenever you come across any government scheme learn which ministry has launched this scheme like you know which ministry is associated with this scheme then you need to understand about the objectives of this scheme you need to understand about the nature of this scheme whether it is a uh, let's say like you know core of the core scheme or it is a core scheme or uh, or whether it is a central sector scheme centrally sponsored scheme these kind of things are important whenever you come across any government scheme related question so here they have given multiple let's say options correct option over here is option d which says its objective is to significantly enhance research modeling and service delivery across crucial areas like weather climate oceans and polar regions so before we go further to the next question let me talk about this prithvi scheme so basically the ministry of art sciences it has noticed that like you know so far people are doing research right in a specific fields that are let's say little disintegrated or little isolated from the broader objective people are doing studies related to climate people are doing studies related to oceans people are doing uh, research related to let's say multiple aspects of the earth but why we should not look it holistically right so that's why the ministry of art sciences government of india has decided right to come up with a government scheme prithvi scheme under which they are going to bring together people from various areas people who are doing studies in geological sciences people who are doing studies in let's say like you know climate related phenomena people are, uh, who are doing studies related to geography and all so basically it is going to be an interdisciplinary research and it's going to assist uh, the scientists and everybody else to understand about the earth in, a, in its holistic format okay this is the thing so correct answer is option d with this let us see the previous air question it says if a major solar storm 
reaches earth which of the following are possible effects on the earth okay solar storm they are they are known as solar flare so they are magnetic flares so if they come right it, it generally comes and like earth's magnetic field actually protects the earth from the solar flares right but the thing is if we did not have earth's magnetic field earth will not be protected in that case many earth systems will be devastated and why do we have a magnetic field around the earth it is because inside the earth we do have molten magma and these molten magma are made of nickel and iron and they keep on moving and their movement creates current right and that current leads to magnetism around the earth okay so it is saying that if a major solar stream reaches the earth which of the following are possible effects on the earth so they have said gps and navigation systems could fail definitely tsunamis could occur at equatorial regions tsunami i mean like you know tsunami is related to oceans so like you know because of uh, some kind of disturbance in the ocean tsunami may happen but like you know this is not going to lead tsunami kind of thing power grids could be damaged intense aurora could uh, could occur over much of the earth forest fires could take place orbit of the satellite could be disturbed and seventh point this is the thing short wave radio communication of the aircraft flying over the polar regions could be interrupted okay so correct answer is option c 1 3 4 right then 6 7 5 will not be the, uh, the case okay correct answer is this so with this let us quickly move to another uh, question so why we have included this question prithvi related scheme it is because like in the uh, press information bureau there is an article there was an article related to this scheme okay so and by the way you can download this pdf from the description of the youtube video and from the pdf you can learn more right those topics that i am not discussing right those are included in the uh, ppt itself now we have another question it says with reference to invariant natural killer t cells okay invariant natural killer t cells basically like you know you have seen in the upsc previous year questions they ask about various types of cells right the difference between plant cells and animal cell difference between eukaryotic cell prokaryotic cell right difference between let's say like viruses fungi a lot of things they ask so this is one of the specific kind of cell that was recently in news so it is important for you that you should learn about this particular topic so they say uh, so this particular cell was currently in news and they have given two statements for us to consider right two statements they have given it says they have the ability to stimulate or suppress the immune system right which is correct uh, i nkt cell means like invariant natural killer t cell therapies leverage both adaptive and innate immune systems both are correct now let me talk about this cell so basically like you know these are those cells these are those cells that are there in human bodies basically what happens uh, like in our body we do have it uh, we do have immune system right that immune system helps us to fight with any kind of foreign substance for example let's say like you know we have white blood cells they are the defense mechanism in our body so if any virus attacks if any let's say pathogen attacks so like you know these cells get activated right and they start the defense mechanism of our body that is known as innate immune system in our body but many a times what we do right uh, related to covid 19 i mean like you know that virus is different so people are given some kind of what we say people are given vaccines also why vaccines are given to people so that we can develop right immunity against some specific types of viruses these are known as the, the kind of immunity that we generate that is known as adaptive immunity okay adaptive un- immunity so these cells these cells have the capacity to either stimulate or suppress our immune system whenever it encounters any kind of virus right so th- this is the thing and these cell uh, the this cell therapies leverage both adaptive and innate immune system this is the thing correct answer is option c in this question so we have a previous year question related to similar topic it says which of the following statement best describes the role of b cells and t cells in the human body okay b cells 
so they protect the body from diseases caused by pathogens okay so these are type of white blood cells that are defense mechanism in our body okay so with this let us now move to the next topic and and these are the news items right that talks about why we have taken this question now we have another question it says with reference to pradhan mantri matsya kisan samriddhi sahay yojana consider the following statements right so this is a government scheme it was in news and that's why we have formulated a question on this government scheme why it is important because recently the finance minister of india right while announcing the interim budget she has talked about blue economy she has talked about the importance of blue economy so they have let's say like you know Uh, like given some fund also for promoting blue economy and when we talk about fisheries aquaculture these are parts of blue economy and for promotion of blue economy we do have various kinds of government schemes for example pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana that's an umbrella scheme and this particular scheme is a sub scheme of of that scheme as i discussed in the beginning so let us go through these three statements to understand about this question as i discussed you need to learn about the type of scheme whether it is a core of the core scheme whether it is a core scheme or whether it is a central sector scheme or a centrally sponsored scheme how the funding pattern will be there what is the objective of this scheme these things are important whenever a government scheme comes so it says the scheme aims at formalizing the fishery sector this is a right our statement second it says it is a centrally sponsored scheme okay it is a central sector scheme not centrally sponsored in case of centrally sponsored scheme the central government gives 60% normal states give 40% to implement the scheme in case of north eastern and hilly states central government gives 90% and those states give 10% right but but it is a central sector scheme so central government is going to uh, let, let's say like you know give all the money however it is going to take money from the private sector also it it believes that private sector is also going to let's say like you know invest money in uh, in similar objectives that's going to let's say like you know uh, push forward the objectives of this particular scheme however state governments are not expected to let's say like you know add money to implement these schemes it says it will be entirely funded by the government with no private sector involvement this is wrong so it will not be entirely funded by the government there will be involvement of the private sector also so correct answer is only the first statement means only one a is the right answer now we have a previous year question it says with reference to pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana consider the following statements again it is a government scheme pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana so they have given multiple statements so it says it is a flagship scheme of the ministry of labor and employment it among other things will also right will also impact training in soft skills entrepreneurship financial and digital literacy it aims to align the competences of the unregulated workforce of the country to national skill qualification framework second and third statements are wrong so by the way we have given answers of the previous year question over here you can yourself refer to them right after downloading the P, uh, like pdf from the description so this is why we have included this question it says it is a central sector sub scheme under pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana okay so with this let us now move to another question this is question number 5 so this question it says consider the following statements here they have given four statements all these four statements are related to magnetism different types of magnets okay so the thing is we see bar magnets we see bar magnets like this okay so we generally see bar magnets like this so bar magnets has polarity north pole south pole and all so if you bring same polarity of other magnet over here right so it is going to repel if you bring other pole uh, let's say north pole near to south pole it is going to attract means they have magnetic properties but within these materials inside these materials there are microscopic particles and these microscopic particles has certain kind of spin and these spin give them let's say like you know magnetic properties so here we are talking about ferromagnets okay ferromagnets anti ferromagnets and we are talking about altermagnets okay basically 
ferro magnets are those magnets that have a strong magnetic capacity so the thing is inside those materials the fields are aligned in a particular fashion okay so when we talk about so let me make you understand about types of magnets let's consider this is a magnet okay let's consider this is a magnet i'm just making a big magnet just to make you understand so inside this magnet the magnetic field lines if they are let's say aligned in a particular direction i mean like you know uh, the microscopic particles if they are aligned in a particular direction so it will give a strong magnetic property to this material okay it will give a strong magnetic property to this uh, to this material okay it will give a strong magnetic property and this strong magnetic property of a material is known as ferromagnetism okay it is known as ferro magnetism okay we do have diamagnetic material we do have paramagnetic material we have ferromagnetic material okay we do have different types of magnetic material and here we are going to discuss about some key terms new terms that are in news related to magnetism of materials okay so it says in ferromagnets the spins of all atoms the spins of all atoms point in the same direction resulting in net magnetic moment this is right as i discussed related to ferromagnets then it says in anti anti ferromagnets the spin of neighboring atoms are aligned in opposite directions this is right so in anti ferromagnetism what happens so this is related to ferromagnet if i talk about anti ferromagnet okay so if i draw let's say another similar diagram in anti ferromagnet one will be here other will be here like this so what is happening so one is directed to the north other is directed to the south means like you know the magnetic properties are cancelling one another so it will be having a net zero magnetic field i mean like it will not be having a strong magnetic property right the entire material so this is what is explained in this second statement it says in anti ferromagnets the spin of neighboring atoms are aligned in opposite direction a spin of neighboring atoms are aligned in opposite direction now it says anti ferromagnets have a spontaneous magnetic order leading to net zero magnetic moment that i have discussed then fourth alter magnets exhibit properties observed in both ferromagnets and anti, uh, anti ferromagnets so there is another kind of magnetic material where we find properties of ferromagnets also and of anti ferromagnets also that is known as alter magnets okay alter magnets means like it has both contrasting properties ex existing together they are known as alter magnets all the four statements are correct in this question okay correct answer will be option d option d all right so we generally discuss about magnetic properties of materials in science and technology uh, classes in gs foundation batch right there are, there i discuss from basics in detail right so that you understand more however since this is just an mcq discussion i am not going in deep at this point of time this is a previous year question it says regarding the atom of a chemical element the magnetic quantum number refers to right magnetic quantum number refers to the orientation okay orientation of the let's say uh, atom in the chemical thing so this is the thing so <clears throat> these are the let's say like images that helps you understand what is magnetism and how magnetism can be observed in materials so this is paramagnetic material this is ferromagnetic material you see like you know uh, this is the thing this is anti ferromagnetic material right and this is ferrimagnetic material like that okay so in your free time what you can do you just download this right and go through it right to understand little more if you have any further doubts you can just write your query in the uh, youtube comment okay so with this we have another question it says recently a lamp post right with a multilingual inscription has been discovered in telangana it sheds light on the trade relation via river kaveri between which of the following kingdom right first of all to answer this question you need to understand this question so it says lamp post it talks about multilingual inscription right so basically lamp post means long back 
even today that's uh, let's say like you know near to the seas near to the ocean you find lamp post i mean like you know you find a post on the top of it there is there are lights okay on the top of it there are lights and these lights actually uh, so when this light is burning so basically it helps the sailors it helps the people who are sailing through the ocean to know where do we have to go where there is a port like that okay this is known as this and inscription okay so this is known as what light pole this is a uh, lamp post okay this is known as lamp post now in the lamp post basically you might have heard about long back inscriptions have been found from different dynasties okay like ashoka's inscription i mean it's like you know these are written format so in the lamp post basically like you know there are some inscriptions there okay means like details are there so this particular lamp post has been found where in telangana and so this lamp post has been recently discovered right so this has added to our understanding about art and culture about trade and commerce in our let's say like you know trade and commerce in our ancient history or medieval history timing so now it says that like you know it sheds light means like it helps us to understand right it helps us to understand on the trade relations via kaveri river between which of the following kingdoms here we need to identify the kingdoms between which trade has been there because like you know light posts lamp posts are to guide people where to come and people are coming let's say in ships to carry goods so basically like you know they have inferred it that way historians have inferred it that way so it talks about let's say like you know trade relations between chalukyas and qutub shahi dynasty qutub shahi dynasty basically this dynasty has ruled in the modern day hyderabad region okay modern day hyderabad region they have done and badami chalukya okay so they are badami chalukyas so they have let's say badami chalukyas and qutub shahi dynasty they had trade relations and after unearthing after finding this particular lamp post they were able to infer they were able to understand that there has been trade relations between these two dynasties Qutub Shahi dynasty and Badami Badami Chalukya dynasty this is the thing here in previous year question it says building kalyan mandapas was a notable feature in the temple construction of the kingdom of vijayanagara vijayanagara kingdom is there in uh, modern day karnataka right in modern day karnataka place we find vijayanagara empire right so earlier there was vijayanagara empire empire in a place where we have karnataka now so it says kalyan mandapa i mean like you know when we are building temples in the temples there is a place that is uh, inside the temple that is known as kalyan mandapa so it is a notable feature in the temple construction okay so this this particular topic is from art and culture but you need to know the history related to it and this topic has been there in current affair that's why we are covering this okay so this is the lamp post that we have identified that we have found and here lot of inscriptions are also there okay then we have another question here it says consider the following states here they have given name of six states okay high sulfur coal is found in abundance in how many of the above states okay high sulfur coal basically the coal coal deposit that we find in northeast india right so they do have high deposit of sulfur so north east india how many states are there arunachal pradesh meghalaya nagaland right these are the three states so it is only three option a is right answer in this case okay option a is right answer so with this we have a previous year question also you refer to this question yourself it says consider the following statements in india state government do not have the power to auction non coal mines see like they have asked questions related to coal mines that is the thing okay so go through this question it says rajasthan has iron ore mines okay this is right okay statement 3 is right and do not have gold mines this is wrong do not have the power to auction non coal mines so state government can auction mines right non non coal mines there can be let's say mines where we find other minerals okay so with this let us now move to another question 
and let me showcase this diagram. So it says state wise coal resources of high sulfur coal. Here Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Nagaland. These states are mentioned. Okay, you need to refer to this table. Now we have another question. This is from mapping topic. Okay, it says consider the following pairs. On one side we do have places that are seen in news and then name of the country where these places are located. Okay, they have mentioned homes, Khartoum and Kuala Lumpur. Okay, so homes is a place which is found in Syria. Why it was in news? Because recently some people in Syria have been killed by the armed forces of USA or Israel. Okay, that's the thing. Khartoum. Khartoum is a place not in South Sudan, but it is a place in Sudan. Okay. Sudan and South Sudan are two different countries in Africa. Sudan is a bigger country, right, where Khartoum is located. South Sudan is relatively smaller as compared to Sudan. For this, you need to refer to the map of Africa. Second is wrong. Kuala Lumpur is the capital of uh, Malaysia. Okay, so that has been in news. So first and three are correct means like only two are correctly matched. Okay, then you need to see the previous year question. Here they have talked about let's say places. They have mentioned Donbas. Donbas is not in Syria. It is in Ukraine. This year Donbas has been in news many a times. Okay, so this is the thing. Kachin. Kachin is not in Ethiopia. It is in Myanmar. Right, Kachin. We have discussed about it in our newspaper discussions also. Tigray. Okay, Tigray is not in North Yemen. Tigray is in Ethiopia. In Tigray also there have been conflicts. Okay, so none of them are correctly matched. Okay, none of them are correctly. This is the previous year question. UPSC has asked this question in 2023 itself. Okay, this is important that you need to refer to this particular uh, topic. So this is Kuala Lumpur, which is let's say like you know in Malaysia. Then this is Khartoum, the place that we discussed. It is in Sudan. Right to the south of Sudan, we have South Sudan. Okay, and Syria. This is homes. Okay, in Syria, Damascus is also there. This is the homes location. So this is the thing. Six civilians among ten dead in Israeli strike on Syria. So Israel has striken in Syria. So that's why it was in news. Now let us see the ninth question. It says with reference to the tilapia fish. Okay. Consider the following statements. They have given three statements related to a variety of fish and why this fish is important because this fish is considered to be the chicken of the seas, chicken of the ocean means like it has high protein content in this particular fish. It is found in Africa. Okay, this is the thing. <clears throat> so they have given three statements. It says it is endemic to Africa. Right, a single tilapia fillet covers 88% of daily value of selenium. Tilapia has been dubbed as aquatic chicken due to the quick growth and low maintenance of cultivation. Okay, this is the thing. So it says how many of the above statements are incorrect? Okay, how many of the above statements are incorrect? So correct, incorrect means none of them are correct, uh, none of them are incorrect. It means all the three are correct. These are correct statements. Remember, these are correct statements related to the variety of fish that we are discussing. It is known as tilapia fish. Okay, so it is endemic to Africa and the Middle East. Endemic means it is only found in Africa and Middle East. It is not found in Asia, Southeast Asia and all. This is the thing. And they have included another question. This is previous year question. It says uh, the release of which one of the following into ponds and wells helps in controlling the mosquitoes. Right. So this is. Uh, Gambusia fish. Okay, so that was that might have been in news that year when UPSC has asked questions. So this is tilapia fish. You see, this is the image of tilapia fish, and these people have tilapia fish in their hand. Now this is the last question for the day, tenth question. Let us quickly discuss. It says consider the following statements regarding black carbon, right? So when we talk about black carbon, so they are kind of shoot. And they are available, let's say, in abundance in the atmosphere. So when we ride vehicles, right, from the vehicles, we do have silencers. And from there, we have different gases. Smokes are coming out of the vehicles. 
and these smokes has black carbon in it. So black carbon is very smooth but it is the second most potent greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. Second most uh, uh, let's say polluting gas in the atmosphere after carbon dioxide. Okay. So they have given three statements. It, it says it is a short lived pollutant. Right. It is the second largest contributor to warming the planet. It is a kind of aerosol. Okay. It is a short lived pollutant. It is second largest contributor to warming. It is a kind of aerosol. All the three statements are correct. Okay. So what are aerosols for this? Read environment and ecology. Read about air pollution. Read about let's say uh, biodiversity related things to learn more about it. Okay. Then this is a previous year question. It says consider, consider, uh, consider the following which can be found in ambient atmosphere. Okay. What can be found in ambient atmosphere? Soot, sulfur, hexafluoride, water vapor. All are right. Ambient atmosphere means normal atmospheric pressure. Okay. So the atmospheric pressure that we have, it is one atmosphere it is known as. Okay. It has around 500 few pascals atmospheric pressure. Okay. So, so Biden cracks down on deadly shoot pollution. So in United States of America, basically, they have started taking action related to, let's say, those vehicles who are polluting, right, who are polluting by releasing black carbon. Okay. So this is the thing. So that's all from my side for the day. Thank you so much everyone for attending today's session. I hope you have a good day ahead. Thank you.